Good morning, Miss Stout's class. This is Miss Parker, and I had really hoped to be there with you this morning. I went to a meeting recently and learned about this new little feature within Canvas, and I asked Miss Castro if I could come to the computer lab for third, fourth, and fifth grade and test it out um, so that you guys could help me learn something. And then what happened was I got sick, and I tried to work yesterday. And it did not go very well, and I am staying home Wednesday in hopes that I can get to feeling better. So what I wanted to do was make a little video for you guys so that you can pretend that I'm with you. And hopefully you can listen carefully. I need you to put your listening ears on so that you can um, hopefully be able to follow these directions when you get back to your computer in just a moment. Um, this feature is within Canvas, so when you log into your computer, you're going to come and click on the Canvas tab, and it will open in a new tab up here. And I'm in student view right now, and I'm already in the course, but I want to point out to you that the course you're going to come to today is going to be called um, Parker Computer Lab. So you should see when you come to your dashboard, um, you, well, I'm in student view, so I'm not... It's not going to look exactly like yours, but you should see on your dashboard a course called Parker Computer Lab, or you can click on courses and it should be there. And this is kind of what it looks like. I know you guys do a lot of things with Canvas with Miss Stout, so this won't be brand new to you. But this feature today should be new. When you get into our com Parker Computer Lab course, today you're going to click on Assignments. And since last week was Read Across America Week and we were honoring Dr. Seuss's birthday, I thought it would be fun to do a little Dr. Seuss activity with you guys today. Try to keep it fun. Um, so when you click on Dr. Seuss, what's going to happen is it's going to try to connect to your Google Drive account, which is what you use when you're on our Chromebooks. And... You have to go through a few steps. So when you click on Dr. Seuss, you are going to be prompted to log in in order to get to your Google account. And what you'll do is scroll down and there's a blue authorize button. And it's important to note that this authorize button is going to pop up a couple of different times. Now, in just a minute, I'm going to click on authorize. But there's going to be a few things that I am able to show you, like where this blue authorize button is. And then after that, there's going to be a few things I just need you to listen carefully to. When you click on authorize, you're going to get a new window that pops up with another authorize button. And you will need to click authorize a second time. Now, this is the part where I need you to listen closely. Because I am in as a test student, my test student account does not have a Google account. So the next part I am not able to show you, so listen carefully. After you hit authorize here and you hit authorize a second time, you are going to be coming to a page that is asking you for a Google email address. When you put in a Google email address, it is going to be your username at st.cabarrus.k12.nc.us. It is not just your username and your password, but it is a full email address. And the at symbol is at the number two key when you hold down shift. And again, it's your username at st dot cabarrus dot k12 dot nc dot us and your password is the same password you use for the computer then you will see a blue allow button and you click on that and you should be in the assignment now i'm going to leave student view so that you can see what the assignment will look like it'll look something like this when it opens up in your window once you've gone through all that you should be able to see a little PowerPoint presentation that you're going to work through and complete. When you click over here on the sides, it gives you different options. But slide five and six are where you're going to actually do the research. So these first slides just give you some information about Dr. Seuss. But then you get to slide five and you have a couple of questions. And if you'll notice, this last question is actually a bonus question, and it's worth two points. So what you'll do is you're going to answer, what is Dr. Seuss's real name? 
On Dr. Seuss's timeline, what important event happened in 1904? On Dr. Seuss's timeline, what important event happened in 1927? In what year did Dr. Seuss publish his first book, And to Think I Saw It on Mulberry Street? The bonus question is, did Dr. Seuss have any children of his own? If so, how many? And to get these answers, you're going to click on this link that's in the title that says answer these questions. And right here, it's going to bring us to Seussville. Right now, we're not going to vote on this Battle of the Books. We're just going to go straight to Seussville. And Seussville has all kinds of information, but I'm interested in the information on the author of who Dr. Seuss was. So I want to click on author and give it a minute to load. And I am looking, Explore most of these Dr. questions Seuss's are coming studio. from the timeline. On the items that Once I click on the timeline, I get to this screen here where I can go left and right for the years and the answers are there. Now there may be like that bonus question might be in his biography somewhere. Not all the answers are in timeline, but most of them are. But you may have to come back to get to the biography. After you answer those questions, there is a word search where you can find these words. And the way we're going to find these words is we're going to use the shape tool. And when I click on shapes, I get a rectangle. And this rectangle will let me, I'm um, drawing a rectangle over one of the words. And if you notice at first, it grays out the word. But when I come to my paint bucket, I can make that transparent. If you happen to have a word that's diagonal, I'm going to go draw a new shape, so I need to come back to my shape tool. But if you have a word that's diagonal, you can draw the rectangle and then get the blue circle, this little blue dot here. When I move that blue dot around, it moves my shape to be rectangular. Another way you can find these words is by using the line feature instead of the shape, and you can draw... Oops, Nope, not that one. Let's try that again. I'm going to draw a line. And I can draw a line through the word if you don't want to do a shape. Either one, that's your preference. You can choose. But I wanted to show you how you can do this word search. I hope you've had fun. I want to remind you of a few things. I want to remind you that um, you are going to have to click on the assignment within our course, which is Parker Computer Lab. You're going to click on Dr. Seuss. You'll see an authorized button the first time. You'll see a second authorized button. You will put an email address in only on the Google page. You may see a pop-up box once or twice that tells you that you need a username and password, and that literally is just a username and password. But when you see Google and email address, that is the username at st.cabarrus.k12.nc.us. If you have any questions, you can ask Ms. Castro. She's going to be there to help you today. And if she has any questions, she knows how to reach me too. I am so sorry that I cannot be there today. I wish I was there to help you with this. And I hope you have a great day. Bye, guys.